Welcome back everybody to Stoffer Garage. Today we're deep cleaning this F350 King Ranch Edition. And if you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe down below. Turn on those notifications so you don't miss out on any new videos on this channel. And I also wanna mention that on Fox Clean, my own detailing brand website, if you guys need products, pick them up. This week I'm randomly slipping in $100 bills into five packages and I'll be posting those stories on Instagram onto what packages we'll be receiving that $100 bill just as a way to give back to you guys for supporting Fox Clean. But let's go ahead and get into this detail and first things first obviously as typical Stoffer Garage fashion, pull out everything from the car including the front seats so that way we can see all of this nastiness as you guys see here that we find underneath them. So with the seats removed, we get a clear idea of how much dirt is in this thing. And I found out that this truck has never been vacuumed on the inside once since it was bought by the owner who owns a farm. Um, one of the nice things about Ohio is there's plenty of farm trucks because a lot of the farmers buy these newer trucks, use them for a couple years because they get tax exemption. Um, and this one in particular is no, is definitely a prime example of that. It's, uh, it's definitely dirty. It's definitely been used like it should be, which is awesome. I always, I always like detailing trucks and cars that get used and this one in particular has been used for its purpose which is on a farm and despite it being a nicer truck a king ranch edition that doesn't bother me and i don't think anybody should be you know upset for that i would always rather have a nicer vehicle if i could afford it to work in than a cheaper one you know it, it it's one of those things that if you can afford it why not right
Now with all the vacuuming done, I'm gonna work on these floor mats and surprisingly the driver side, the, the rubber floor mat they must have had must have got completely destroyed because the driver side was the only one that used the carpeted floor mat as the main floor mat. Um, so this one needed a couple doses of uh, pressure washing, extraction, uh, drill brushing, and then pressure washing again to get as much dirt out of it as possible. And I would say after even doing all of that, as you guys will see in the before and after shots at the end of this little clip, it still had a little bit of dirt in it. Um, I could have worked on this thing for hours and I think I would have never got all of it out because of all the fine dust that comes from the cornfields. Now because the majority of the truck had the carpeted floor mats down and the plastic floor mat, rubber floor mats down, there wasn't a whole lot of extraction that needed to be done because it did protect the floor quite a bit. So the only areas were around these door sills that needed majority of the extraction where there's a lot of caked on, actually this side, the passenger side, had a lot of mud that was caked in around those plastic panels. So when I took that kick plate off, it gave me plenty of access to make sure I removed all of that dirt and grime that had built up there and then just extracted those segments in the main floor area to get all of those carpets looking like new again. Now with anybody that has these side sills that have these metal inserts in them, this goes for pretty much any car on the market. If you actually unclip those, they just pop out. The metal piece in the side usually just has tabs that you can remove as well because sometimes you can get rocks and stuff that get stuck in between the plastic and those trim pieces and you can never really get them out because they get wedged in there. 
you can remove those to get those completely clean as I'm showing here. So that way you guys can detail your car and make it look perfect. Now the entire dashboard is covered in dust obviously, but the steering wheel has grease and grime caked on it as typical. Um, yeah, so that's where I spent a lot of the time, especially on this dashboard, but for anyone wondering what products I use, I have them all listed in the description boxes below, um, especially these plush microfiber towels, which are stellar for getting into all those nooks and crannies, especially whatever the brush can get into. These plush microfiber towels allow you to wipe across those surfaces, and because the fibers are so thick, um, and plush, they can actually get into those, making it a lot easier to make sure you soak up all of that dirt and all-purpose cleaner.
Now, in the past, I've done a King Ranch, and it's probably been a couple years since I've done one, but if you guys remember back in the day when I did a King Ranch, I'm always... I love these seats in particular. I love the color combinations, I love the stitching, and whenever you clean these things with leather cleaner and then put the conditioner on, they come out looking insane. I'm, I'm just, if I was to buy a truck, I would love to have these seats in it as well, just because one, they last a long time, the leather's always been really good and forward in terms of uh, durability standpoint, um, but yeah, these seats are just spectacular. I'm, I'm in love with them, to be honest. Now before I tackle the rear bench seats in this truck, um, I'm going to tackle all these tabs and these are all the tabs that cover the bolts that bolt down the seats and then also the cup holder um, in the center console that were covered in dirt and grime. I just kind of put those on my workbench. I like to pull them out of the car because that way you can make sure you get every little area of them on the front and the back and then also in those areas where um, dirt can kind of get collected if you didn't pull them out before. So always like to clean those on the bench using just all purpose cleaner and my detailing brushes uh, to get those completely cleaned and ready to put back in.
Now while I condition these re leather seats, I just want to mention one thing that if YouTube didn't have a policy where I couldn't use regular music, I would, if, if that makes sense. Uh, the one thing about YouTube is if you make YouTube videos, you can't use like just generally popular music. So I have to use the music that I have in here. A lot of people ask where I get it from. Um, if you're interested, it's epidemicsound.com. It's like a subscription service that a lot of YouTubers use. Um, there's a lot of different sites that do it. They just have a good range of music that I've always liked. Um, that you pay a monthly service fee to use and that way you can use that music in your videos. Um, but ideally I would love to use popular just trending music or anything that everybody likes but I have to pick from a certain selection of music so that way I don't get copyright issues. But um, if you're wondering and you're always asking those questions, um, that's where I get all my music from. So one question that I get a lot is why don't I do customer reactions anymore? And the main thing that comes into play there is I've had some really, really big videos that have done over 40 million views. And when I get those customer reactions, as nice as they are to have, because it feels good for me to see the customer reaction, for you guys to kind of share and, and see that. Um, but there's a lot of nasty people that can kind of say some really mean things in the comments toward them. And I think that's just one of the reasons why I don't feel it's, I don't feel comfortable doing it anymore because I don't want them to watch the video, maybe look at the comments and then just get completely blasted by people they don't know, especially if they don't do YouTube and they're not used to any of those negative comments that people give. So that is the main reason why I don't do customer reactions anymore, especially because of the fact that they're generous enough to let me borrow their car for a couple days to film these videos. So if you guys are wondering where those reactions have gone to, that is the main reason why I don't do them anymore. Um, I'd love to do them for you, but that's just kind of how the world works these days. Anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Subscribe down below. Make sure you guys give it a thumbs up. Go ahead and leave those comments as well, and I will see you guys next week.